Hello, this is a tutorial video for running the scuffed computer improviser from, I think it's V.21 uh, or .21 from um, May 26. So when you unzip the uh, files uh, in the SCI folder, you'll find all of the necessary um, um, dependencies as well as the main uh, Max 8 patch for the scuffed computer improviser. So the, all of these are just dependencies to this bottom um, file here, Scuff Computer Improviser. So all you need to do is open that one and it will call on all these other ones. Um, so I'll launch that now. And then the only other dependency besides these files, which should automatically load since they're in the same root folder is uh, the ML star library. So before looking at anything else, um, you can get the ML star library, which is a machine learning library um, um, in the package manager. So you got ML dot, it'll come up quickly. I think it's literally like an asterisk star if I recall correctly. Um, ML star. Oh no, it's STAR by Benjamin D. Smith. So this is a fantastic machine learning library. So you'll need to have uh, this for the ML.Markov object, which is a, a Markov chain object. I hope to have my own JavaScript um, Markov chain in future iterations of the patch. But for now, this is the one dependency that I still need to weed out, but it is a fantastic library. So, so be it. Um, so when you launch, you get this main um, interface here. Um, Initialize will turn on audio and bring up the amplification, get everything initialized. Uh, you can choose from the speaker right here, mono, stereo, up to six speaker surround sound. Um, and you uh, ideally are in the DAC set to uh, 48K and as small as an IO and signal vector size as possible. You certainly want the scheduler in overdrive as well for it to work smoothly. Um, from the front area, the um, the best thing to do to test to make sure things are working is uh, initialize. Well, first make sure you have no errors in the Max console, but initialize, and then you can turn on the ADC. I'm going to turn on sound files um, and and sort of show how this works with sound files. But you will have to press that one or two in order to get any input. Um, so I'll just open up a little bit of. Uh, recording session I did with uh, Maria Ki Marina Kiverstein here and just play that and make sure the attack detection is working yeah so the amplification is by default pretty low so it's working fine there let's just try a second one with a little bit different of a sound yeah so it's working fine um, if that is not working well um, right now there aren't a lot of controls to finesse it unfortunately uh, I have it working through and here I've gone into guts and then listener it's all all the attack detection and pitch detection is being done through the retune object um, so the attack detection is actually here um, and the pitch detection is here and then the latency there will offset things a little bit but that'll sort of be taken care of in the back end more or less um, and so as long as you're getting attacks at all then uh, then you know that that is work the listener is working properly um, and if you're curious about sort of the makeup of this patch it's all there in the in the guts and the interesting stuff is in the brain SCI um, mostly so now what do the other buttons do so the this but open button at the top of the improviser shows the behaviors of the improviser so you have doubler, follower, reactive, leader, Markov, matcher, inverse, uh, and then uh, the patch that automates those behaviors when you turn it on and off. Uh, and then in order to um, have the improvisers actually improvise, you have to train them. So it's audio corpus based. So you can play a sound file into it or you can uh, perform music live into it. Uh, and when you hit the train button, it starts analyzing the audio flow. And, cr and it creates uh, sort of a pool of, of, um, of sounds that it can play back uh, and cut up in different ways according to uh, the analysis, which is a pitch uh, analysis, rhythm analysis, uh, brightness, 
M and um, what is the last one? Well, loudness um, and oh, brightness and spectral flatness. Yeah, so harmonicity more or less. Um, then when you uh, press on, after you've done training it, you sort of click it on, click it off, the training is done. And then you can have on and off button here is like to automate that improviser. So it will then react to the incoming audio and sort of change its behavior according to what it he hears. So it'll switch between these different behaviors. Um, and the F and when it's off, you can choose the behaviors manually. So right now, the I'd say the more interesting behaviors are the Markov and the Matcher. Um, though I think there's interesting usages for all of them. But you can sort of play with each one and experiment with each one manually, if uh, or you can just automate it using that on off button. And the FB stands for feedback. So this feeds the improviser back into the input. So you could essentially you could train all the different improvisers, turn on the feedback, and have them sort of continually react to one another. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the different behavior tabs here. And then I will start to train them using these violin recordings. So go back in here. Um, I will start with the gristmill improvisation. Hit train and then play it. So this is going to give it a pretty um, uniform corpus. So it's gonna it's gonna really play back things that are similar to this because there's not a lot of variation um, in the improvisation. Some timbral differences, but but not a lot of different musical material. Okay, so we've trained that first one. So if I tr if I now put on the Markov, it'll sort of just improvise using those the that material right um, some of some of these are reactive and some of these are um, are productive so like the Markov and the leaders will create music without any input um, but the other ones all sort of require uh, incoming sound in order to operate so I will go ahead and choose a second. I guess I'll use the Whistler harmonics. I forget what that is exactly. I'll leave this one on and then train the second one. All right, turn that one on, train the next one. Kepler. Give it a different one. Let's do the reverse whistler. Okay, let's just play one of these cues. I'm not sure what these are exactly. Okay, and now I'm gonna put all the feedbacks on and they'll just continue to iterate. So it'll take just a moment to sort of dissipate and finish what it's doing, but um, that's basically how um, how the, the the software works. I did very limited trainings there, so it's uh, it, it it can be much more diverse with a more diverse set of musical inputs, or you can really you could use it to create drones and harmonize with and and whatnot because it will be sort of limited to use what it's fed. Um, and uh, and I would encourage uh, anyone who's using this to play around with manually choosing these and seeing what they do 
um, as well as using this the the automation. The matcher I think is is particularly interesting. Basically, it searches. Um, it has like a color matching algorithm. I'll open this up for a second. It has a color matching algorithm here, um, where it takes all the different pieces of data and tries to find the closest match to what it's hearing at the moment and play that back. So if you um, perform, uh, if you train it with like a lot of noisy techniques that sort of vary, like different sound noises, um, different percussive noises, um, and then you try to get it to match um, you doing the same thing after, you get some very interesting um, results of it sort of trying to follow you and trying to figure out uh, and match what you're doing. Um, but otherwise, yeah, if anyone is curious, they can sort of go in and sort of try to pick apart what is happening, but that's the basic operation of it. Um, then the, the last thing that I should um, show is the networking capabilities. So if you go into P networking, there is um, a UDP receive object. So it, it's possible for someone either through a, a local area network or through the internet to control this patch while someone else performs on it. So the idea of this would be that someone is streaming using, using this improviser and then myself or someone else who is accustomed to the operation of a patch can sort of manually play around with these or even just like do mixing or decide when the training stops and starts uh, while the improviser is sort of free to uh, improvise and react musically. So to give some sort of high level controls. Um, so this is where that's received. And then the patch that sends that data is the um, network controls, I believe. So if we open that up, yeah. So it's a, it's one way communication. You get no feedback from this end. So the person will be needing to watch the other person's uh, stream basically and see what's happening and hear what's happening in order for this to work as little latency as possible though because it is um you know pre precise late a little bit of latency is not a problem for this because these are all very high level controls which improviser is functioning so you can turn each of the improvisers on and off for improvisers one two three four uh the level of amplification the level of the electronics um and also these sort of gesture um, you can trigger these gestures. So there's various um, just sort of musical gestures that are programmed into the improviser. I, I will probably expand the repertoire of gestures at some point, but for now you have these five. And so these can all be turned on and off and triggered. Um, there are some, these should not be invisible uh, in any case. Um, I will fix that before I actually upload the, the files. Um, so yeah, it could be done as like a duo where you have one person do, you, doing the high level controls of the patch while the other person is able to sort of concentrate on the on their improvisation. Okay, so I think that is it. The stop button I didn't talk about, that stops the sound. Very easy, very simple. Um, and with that, I will end. Enjoy. <laughs>